Lesson 3.3, Ethical Obligations. Your sources, your subjects, and you. Last lesson, we talked about your ethical obligations to truth, accuracy, and fairness. In this lesson, you'll look at the second half of your ethical obligations to the people and subjects you interact with and report on as a journalist and how those ethical choices affect you. At the end of the day, ethics is about people and how we treat one another. So an important ethical idea in journalism is that you should always try to minimize harm. As an ethical journalist, you should think about those who may be affected negatively by your news coverage. And you should try to be as compassionate and humane toward them as possible without compromising the truth. This is especially true when dealing with children, minors, and inexperienced sources or subjects. As a high school journalist reporting on your peers, you have to be very careful because most of the sources and subjects you're going to cover, they are minors and inexperienced sources. It's your job as an ethical journalist to never try to put them in a place that might cause them physical, mental, or psychological harm. And that sometimes might even mean not publishing certain stories or images if this kind of harm is possible. For instance, ethical journalists should be really sensitive when seeking or using interviews or photographs of people who've been through a tragedy or they're, that they're grieving. And, and an ethical journalist should know that your pursuit of the news story is not a free pass for you to do anything you want and be arrogant. Realize that private citizens who aren't superstars or like government officials who seek positions of power or fame these private citizens have a much greater right to control information about themselves and you should only publish information against their will if the public's right to know that information is more important than keeping their privacy and that's a discussion you would always have with your editors and your advisors and things like that finally minimizing harm means that you show good taste and you don't just publish things about people because you know it'll get a reaction Remember, as high school journalists, you're dealing primarily with juveniles who have more of a right to privacy and more protection than adults do. So be cautious in the stories you tell and how you tell them. Overall, just keep in mind that the things you publish, both good and bad, are read by real people and those things have real consequences on real people's lives. You have a pretty big responsibility. As a journalist, you will constantly be dealing with people and, and organizations who are providing you with information for your stories. These people, these organizations that give you info are known as sources. As an ethical journalist, you should clearly let the public know who your sources are as well as how reliable they are on the topic being discussed. Like we talked about in the prior lesson, you should always fact check what a source tells you and not simply take their word for it. This applies to both human and traditional research sources like information you find on a website or in another article. For instance, just because Wikipedia says something does not make it true. This is the current Wikipedia page for Oliver Wendell Holmes High School and it says that our superintendent is John Folks and that our principal is Dennis Ann Strong and that's not accurate. That's not even true. Online sources need just as much scrutiny as human sources. And speaking of Wikipedia and online sources, one of the greatest ethical issues facing you today as a journalist is the issue of plagiarism and violation of copyright. You've probably heard your teachers talk about the academic consequences of copying someone else's words, work, or ideas, and how doing so on the collegiate level can even result in being expelled or kicked out. That's one thing, but when it comes to journalism, plagiarism, or copying words, work, art, photos, logos, drawings, or anything from anyone or anywhere without getting the proper license, citation, or credit is never, ever, ever, ever allowed. 
you're going to be tempted to Google image a picture of a pencil that you want to use or, or something like that. And maybe you simply want to just search for that thing and look for it in images and pull one of those off to use on a desktop. But without the proper rights and permissions, that is plagiarism. That's a violation of copyright. You can't pull words, images, ideas, things like that off of the internet without properly getting licenses, credit, anything like that. So just remember, never, ever do this. High school yearbooks and newspapers get sued all the time over copyright infringement because student journalists decide to take shortcuts or that these rules don't apply to them. So I'll say it even more clearly. We cannot use or publish anything that we randomly pull from Google Images, Wikipedia pages, or any other general or specific websites or sources that we did not create or that we don't own the rights to without getting express written permission to do so. You still may be tempted to borrow a few words from here or a little graphic from there, so let me be even more clear. If you publish anything, no matter how small or short, that you got from a source that you didn't clearly and directly get permissions or citations that say that it came from that source, you have committed one of the most unethical acts in journalism and you will lose your job and position on this staff or any other staff. Got it? Get it? Good. Just remember, you've been warned. Finally, to be an ethical journalist, you shouldn't let a source or subject influence you any way to tell anything other than the real, accurate truth about something. Because of the power you hold as a journalist, people in groups may offer you favors, fees, gifts, or special treatment to influence you to tell or not tell a certain story, or to change how you tell a story in a certain way, and you should never accept or let these things change what you do. Now, as a high school journalist, you're probably not going to be bribed or threatened to tell or change a story very often, but if you are, you should tell the authorities, like your journalism teacher, immediately. Your advisor should be equipped with how to handle situations like this, and if not, then go to the proper authorities. Now, a much more realistic scenario that you should avoid is simply showing favoritism to people you know or who are your friends. The most common ethical mistake young journalists make is just showing favoritism and giving unfair coverage to people they know and are friends with. It's unethical to choose to put the picture of your friend on the yearbook spread just because it's a picture of your friend. You should always be loyal to the story you're telling and try to cover lots of different people, some of whom you know, but many and most of whom you may not know. You will no doubt be faced with this ethical dilemma early on in your journalism career. When your friend on staff urges you to put the picture of their boyfriend as the main picture on the football spread, just because it's their boyfriend and they're madly in love, don't do it. Instead, pick the picture that is the best and best tells the story. Remember, journalism ethics are not something that you can learn about and understand just by watching a few lesson videos. So be sure to research them on your own. Get to know and practice these ethics without being told. Remember, being an ethical journalist is something that is very important in our society and world. Commit to being both excellent and ethical at what you do, and you'll be a hero saving the world.